gymnast Simone Biles, the greatest of all time, is Simone withdrawing Biles from another Olympic event. It was more like, don't eat. You look like an elephant. You look like you swallowed a pig. You You're... had coaches tell you that? Um, yeah, I did. It's going to be like evil people in the world, but they don't have to get away with it. And you don't have to just take it because I did that. And it sucks. Like, it sucks. The 23-year-old revealing she's, quote, suffered long bouts of depression. Job and I didn't want to risk the team a medal for uh, kind of Very selfish and immature. That's amazing gymnast. Everybody's shitting on us. With the recent outcry of mental health in the Olympics, from Naomi Osaka to Simone Biles, and the numerous attacks that they have faced for speaking out. This has really got me thinking about the, the, the terrible pressures that we place on athletes to win and perform. And when I say pressures, I mean extreme pressures. In the gladiator days, the athletes, they had their bodies sacrificed for the enjoyment of the crowd. Now today, we think of ourselves as more advanced, more evolved than those primitive Romans. But that's not the case. See, it's the same game, just a different name. See, instead of sacrificing the bodies, we sacrifice the minds of our athletes for our own enjoyment and pleasure. See, we don't view them as people. We see them as objects to perform feats for our own indulgence. Athletes work hard their entire lives. They, they sacrifice their physical and mental health for a gold or silver medal. And after, after their routine is complete, we turn our, our screens off. But what we don't realize is after we turn our screens off, their lives keep going. And at the end of the tunnel, often it's not a pot of gold. It's depression, it's drugs, and in some cases, it's suicide. I, I just figured that it was the best thing to do is just to end my life. After the Olympics, I was diagnosed with severe clinical depression, and it nearly cost me my life. The unreasonable pressures on athletes is not a new thing. In the 1980s, a physician named Robert Goldman asked 200 world-class athletes the same question. The question was this, if I had a drug, a single drug, a magical drug that if you took it, you would win every competition that you enter. But the only drawback is that after you take the drug in five years, you would die. This study has been done numerous times after and has produced similar results. Now where, where does this toxic, cancerous, success, obsessive mentality come from? We have to look in the mirror because it comes from us and the brainwashing starts early. You know, I read another study. This one asks kids what they want to be when they grow up. I would have thought that some of them would have said a, a doctor, firefighter, an astronaut. The kids today, when asked what they want to be when they grow up, they said they want to be famous. And not famous for anything in particular, famous for the sake of being famous. See guys, often, it is a sense of deep unworthiness that causes people to want to achieve massive success and fame. But it's like what Jim Carrey said. He said, I wish everybody could be successful, famous and rich, so then they could know for sure that that won't make them happy. I urge parents, coaches, institutions, teachers, please take mental health Seriously, love athletes for, for who they are already, not just for what they can do. And to all the athletes out there, I urge you, follow the lead of Naomi Osaka, of Simone Biles, and take your mental health seriously. Protect your mental health at all costs as if your life depends on it, because it does. And please never attach your identity to something as unreliable as the body. Your spirit is, is so much greater than any number on a scorecard or an Instagram post. And so I'll end this with a quote from the singer Lauren Hill. How you gonna win if you ain't right within? Peace. We're humans, right? We're human beings. Nobody is perfect. So yes, it is okay to not be okay. It